Hello, everyone. Today, we're going to go over Cambodian American foodways from genocide to donuts. Now, if you go here, I'm going to go over why 90% of all donut shops are owned by Cambodians in California. Well, now you're going to know this important hidden food history. Let me take myself out. <laughs> all right, Cambodian donut shops and the negotiation of identity. Now, Cambodia has had one of the most tragic histories in human um, history, unfortunately. Uh, one of the most tragic. So for, for instance, in Cambodia, there was this uh, gentleman, I don't want to call him a gentleman, this man named Pol Pot. And he kind of wanted to quote, make, uh, you know, Cambodia great again. And so he said, hey, let's actually uh, go back to like what it was a thousand years ago, right? And um, that's what he thought, right? And so, yeah, let's make everyone a farmer again, because that's when we were great Cambodia. So what he did when he came to power, and again, uh, the US has a lot of culpability in this, uh, because they destabilized the system where uh, Cambodians were it made him uh, he, he, uh, get into power. He was head of this group called the Pol Pot. Uh, it was called the Khmer Rouge. And this gentleman was called uh, Pol Pot. And what he had, what he did is he wanted to make Cambodia great again. So when he went in to invade Cambodia, uh, he's Cambodian, is that he killed all the doctors, lawyers, teachers. He took all the ballerinas and killed them in one day. So a very tragic history. If you actually even wore glasses at the end or jeans or had long hair, he killed you. Now, the ethnic Chinese who lived in Cambodia for generations, 50% of them were killed because, again, if you spoke a different language. So very traumatized, intensely terrible past. Very tragic. So this Chinese Cambodian, his name is Ted Nyoi, he actually immigrates to the United States and he actually goes into a donut shop and he's like, he tastes a donut. He's like, delicious. This is amazing. So he starts working at three different donut shops in the U.S., and so after he, uh, you know, eats these donuts and he learns the ins and outs of donuts, he actually tries to start his own donut uh, place. And what he does, he employs all his family members and those family members employ other family members and they immigrate more and more family members over to United States. And so this Chinese Cambodian group really much dominates the Cambodian uh, donut game and all the, the American donut game, especially in California, because 90% of all the donut shops in California are owned by. Cambodian Chinese and Cambodians. So let's actually unpack this. Let's talk about why are Cambodians open, oh, uh, able to open up donut shops, okay? So number one, they actually, um, they sort of have like, a, not exactly, they have like, they have loan sharks, they give jewelry um, they, to gather money together. There is kind of like informal lending group and this is how they do it. It's called Tong Time and 10 people, everyone's gonna pull in $1,000 each. And guess what? That's $10,000. That's enough to open up a donut shop. You're gonna employ your relatives to work for free. You're gonna make your kids work for free. It's gonna be seven days a week, 24 seven. And that's how you're able to do it. And after that person opens up the donut shop, you put back the $1,000 into the next pot and they open up another donut shop, another donut shop, another donut shop. And this slow, slow kind of Asian uh, way of, um, uh, supporting each other. That's actually how they're op open, able to open them. And again, if you want to look at Korean, uh, uh, Korean kind of um, clothing cl uh, cleaners, like dry cleaners, that's how they did it. If you want to look at Vietnamese nail salon, that's how they did it. So this is very much an Asian way, you, not using uh, kind of uh, official means because they wouldn't get a, a loan because they don't speak English, right? So this is a really wonderful way that they used Asian norms in Asia to help each other in America. So again, you get in a group again with 10 people and you give again and you create another donor shop. And that's how 90% of all donor shops in California owned by Cambodians. Now let's talk about it. Wow, sweet success, right? This is a traumatized group. They worked hard and they were able to kind of get the American dream. And they had one of the just most terrible histories. Um, it just for humans, you know, the fact that Pol Pot killed or Khmer Rouge killed almost one in four Cambodians and they came here very traumatized and they're able to actually create this beautiful, delicious, sweet item for Americans to eat at a cheap price. 
Now let's actually unpack why are these donut shops so successful? Number one, these are things that Americans, uh, some typical Americans would not do. Now, a lot of these Cambodian and Sino-Cambodian, which means Chinese Cambodians, they work 18 hours a day seven days a week. Now ask yourself, would a typical American do that? Usually, so if you actually look at the donut, it is very severely underpriced because if you actually added all the labor that went into that donut shop, which is seven days a week, 18 hours a day, it would not be a dollar donut or 50 cents a donut. It'd probably be like $5. But again, you're getting a lot of free labor and a lot of underpaid, underpaid and unpaid labor. Now, on, another reason why they're successful is uh, customers uh, actually got to know the customer's favorite donut and also very different like Korean norms or East Asian norms, which is like, you don't look at people in the eye, you don't touch. And that's actually the norm in East Asia shows respect. But in America, that can be interpreted differently, particularly if it's to a minority uh, thing. Now, number one, in terms of Cambodia, very friendly, and they're very friendly to their customers, cost efficient. Uh, most Americans can afford to buy a 50 cents donut. And you know, something that, you know, I'm feeling this during the pandemic. So something you don't think about, but a lot of homeless people can just easily sit in a, in a donut shop all day long, and they will not get hassled. So that's a, also, I, I want to say even housing that donut shops do. And that's something that people don't understand. And they also, um, to own a, a donut shop is also one of the cheapest things that you can own, right? In terms of a real tell. If you want to open a McDonald's, you got to put in a million dollars, right? Donut shop, not too bad. You just need to rent it. And then you get your free labor of your family and your hard work and grit. So again, that's something to think about. All right. Now they sell everything at a donut shop. Now um, they sell sticky rice. They sell like, it's almost like a Chinese restaurant as well. Egg rolls, coffee, chips, chicken. I've seen tortillas. I've seen um, tacos, hamburgers, croissant. Ha ham I mean, pretty much anything they can imagine they sell. You can actually even um, get your ca check cash there. And they're also willing to open up donut shops in low income areas, i.e. gang areas, places that are quote food deserts. Well, you know what? They'll open a donut shop there and actually and employ local people and also um, feed local people. That's something that people don't understand that they are supplying another hidden story about Asian Americans supplying food to really hard hit food desert areas. Also, something you don't know about donut shops is it's extremely stressful. They get robbed at gunpoint several times. People are racist towards them. Uh, they scream and yell at things. They get harassed by multiple people all the time. It is very stressful job. And one of the things they, they don't do is they don't report the crime. Um, they just in turn, they just um, take the trauma of being robbed at gunpoint all the time. And, and again, that's something maybe, I don't know, that's something I want you to think about. Also, they let homeless sleep inside. And so that's something that's different. Now, I want you to think about success. Well, uh, what? why is it successful? Well, you got the Cambodian solidarity, Cambodian Chinese in particular. Uh, you got willing to work uh, with other refugees and employ other refugees who are also traumatized, who don't speak English. Um, that's an employment opportunity for them. They work long hours. Uh, the child labor is also free. Um, they're working with their kids. Uh, that's seven days a week. Um, uh, so uh, let me true that in that they actually, those kids are always working. The materials are pretty cheap. It's like dough and sugar and pretty much you got the donut. Okay. Um, they don't do upgrades. If you look around, are donut shops like very decorated? No. Okay. Do they have fancy stuff, fancy furniture, fancy? No, they don't do that. Right. It's you get your donut for 50 cents and that's how it's going to be 50 cents. Okay. Um, and language skills, you know, you don't have to learn a lot of English to sell donuts. Like if someone says a maple bar, one dollar you can say that and you can understand it when someone replies with that okay so low language skills are uh, a, a plus in this and also you know the tongue time the, the pulling together all these different uh items is really wonderful okay now now there's lower end uh cambodian shots but uh donut shots but now they're moving into higher end places all right so my question I have for you, and I want you to maybe put in your precis or put in your writing is, how do a Cambodian cultural practice contribute to success? How do Cambodians spread their business model? And what are the pitfalls of working in a Cambodian donut shop? Now, what did they not buy? So again, I want you to think about that and I want you to reflect, okay? 
Also, I want you to respect and, and look at the pink box and the origin. It's so beautiful. A lot of people like associate Cambodian donut shops with the pink box. And, you know, here's the, sh the, the very short story why they have a pink box. It's actually cheaper by a lot to get the cheap, the pink box and the white box. So, and now it's just been synonymous with Cambodian donut shops. Also, the future, a lot of Cambodians are moving into fried chicken. They're opening up fried chicken places. So, so that's kind of an interesting uh, new uh, entree that they're doing. So again, giving a lot of food, delicious food for a cheap price for a massive amount of people. So I want to thank you so much for listening to this presentation.